Okay, the next thing we want to do now that we've done some of the basic adjustments on our picture is we want to move on to some of these uh, more advanced uh, tabs here. So let's click on Tone Curve. Now, back in the old days of Photoshop, you know, two or three years ago, all we had was the point curve to deal with. And it was kind of easy to screw it up if you didn't know what you were doing. Uh, they say make an S curve, but you try to make an S curve, and man, holy geez, can you make an S curve? What can you do here? Uh, maybe that's kind of it, but now it's kind of contrasty and don't look too good. Maybe if I move this up, now that brings out uh, all that, and it just ends up looking bad. So let's go ahead and put that back to medium contrast where it is. What we've got now is the parametric curve. Uh, this is new in CS3. Uh, or Photoshop. You can still play with the point curve and, and take your time and do little little small adjustments, but uh, I really like using the parametric uh, curve instead. And it's really, for me, it's really easy because I have kind of a set, a set of numbers that I like to use for most of my pictures. Uh, my highlights are going to go up to 20. My lights are going to go to 10. Darks are going to go to negative 10, and my shadows are going to go to negative 20. And so right away, that gives me a very nice um, contrasty picture. It's bringing out color a little bit more. Um, the contrast is darkening the darks and, and lightening the lights. And yet we still have good definition, good contrast. Let's click the preview button show you where we were. And you probably can't see too much of a difference on the on the web there, but that's what we're looking at as far as a, a difference goes. So let's go ahead and now go over to our detail. Uh, so we click on that, and now whenever you're doing detail, you never want to uh, see it at a smaller version like this. You always want to zoom in all the way, and I'll show you why. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll get in on her face and. And she's got a beautiful face, but if we go ahead and we start going crazy with the sharpening, um, it just kind of starts to look bad. Uh, it really makes a mess of the skin, and uh, it's just not not too good. You we'll play with all these numbers here, and what's it doing for you? You really don't know. But looking at this right now, we can see it's just it the sharpening has just ruined the picture. But if we were to look at it at the smaller version here. Uh, you really don't see anything. Matter of fact, you click the preview to see the before and after of what you just did, and you really can't tell a difference. So, whenever you are doing any kind of sharpening, always zoom in because if you're not zoomed in, uh, you don't know what kind of damage you're doing to your picture. So, I'd recommend just going into Photoshop to do your sharpening, anyways. Um, if you want to give give a little bit here to give a little punch that's fine um, I'm gonna put mine at uh, 70 and bring my radius all the way down to 0.5 uh, detail and all that we can yeah, I'm not gonna change it that this small amount anyways but again we look at the preview and see the difference there there's again with the web video you're not gonna be able to see a big difference I'm not even seeing a big difference myself it's just it's just a uh, punching it up just a little bit which is really at this point all we want to go. Um, the other tabs here I don't really play with too much myself. Um, the HSL grayscale I'll occasionally uh, do a grayscale picture in camera raw but what we can do is just convert to grayscale and and it's going to change our picture. It is, it is not. Okay, I'm going to change it. No, where's my grayscale? Grayscale mix. It's not cooperating right now. Why not? Hmm. Okay, well, we won't worry about it right now then. Uh, let's see. Split toning, chromatic aberration. If you wanted to do, if you were only going to do your edit in Camera Raw and you wanted a, a vignette at this point, uh, you can go ahead and do your vignette. Either. Let's see. Wow, nothing is changing. Why is nothing changing right now? Let me see. Ah, preview. That's why it's not doing anything. There we go. So, 
run back here real quick. Uh, grayscale, that's going to change to our grayscale. We can change the reds. It's at negative 9 now. Or we can really change the reds to wherever we wanted them to. Put it back at uh, negative 9. Um, and the blues. We'll see what's going to affect the pants. No big deal. Well, we're not going to do a grayscale though, so we'll do that as it is. Uh, maybe I'll pump up the blues just to, just to play with those jeans a little bit, and maybe the magentas to play with that background a little bit. Um, split toning, I'm not going to use at all. Um, lens vignetting, this is uh, what I was just getting into a moment ago. If you're only going to do your editing in camera raw, and you wanted to you know, save your picture from here and not go into Photoshop at all, uh, you could give yourself a vignette from here. Um, either bring it way down here and darken up your you know, your corners or bring it all the way to the right and, and brighten them up. You can even kind of see in your slider here. Uh, it's very dark over here. you got grays in the middle and you got whites on this side. That'll tell you where your vignette's going to go. So if we wanted to zero it out again to show you what it normally looks like. And if we wanted to go with a little bit of a vignette, we'd bring it down there a little bit. So, uh, then we have our camera profile and our presets. Honestly, no one really uses those. Sometimes they do, but whatever. So, let's uh, leave it at that for now, and we will go on to our next thing, because we've got a nice picture here of a girl holding a gray card, but that's not really what we want to use for our final image. So, I'm going to click on Done, then we're going to show you what you can do with all the changes that we just made.